project was made possible by Brilliant. More on them later. What is it like to build your own aerial circus sculpture? Design, engineering, making, so that you can perform on it high up in the air. Well, it's pretty intense. I made this moon in less than a month, while working a full-time job and in preparation for a big, exciting show at Burning Man. So here's the full story. I performed on a moon once before and was hugely inspired. Ever since, I knew I wanted to make a moon sculpture of my own and with my own specific design twists. The beauty and, as you watch this, perhaps the curse of being able to create totally custom sculptures for myself is that I make them very custom for my body. When I create a sculpture that has to be performed on at such a high level, well, it has to fit perfectly. What I'm trying to get at here is, who even needs metric or imperial? Okay, well, you know, at some point the measuring tapes were helpful, although I was definitely doing conversions of two lengths of Theus femur equal tube C. And of course, at a certain point, even CAD had to crash the party, but voila, I'm ready to start making my aerial moon for real. This aerial moon is created out of one inch mild steel tubing. All metal projects start the same way, with a meditative act of cleaning your metal while you contemplate whatever crazy you are about to get into. Here, I'm removing the coating of mineral oil from the metal because in order to weld metal, it has to be fully clean. Figuring out the precise alignment for the angles of the moon was challenging, because even with CAD drawings, once you are working with real materials in real life, sometimes you also just have to use your own judgment for the best way that things can fit together. 69. <laughs> Time to commit and start making cuts. I notched and cut the lengths of the spacers that would make the moon structural and three-dimensional. Like with any project, the work of grinding, measuring, marking, cutting, re-measuring. This way too. Prepping joints, grinding, dance breaks, notching. These are the things that take most of the time. It was time to start welding the moon together, starting with some tack welds. Tack welding means you are just putting little dots of weld on the joints so that whatever you are making is lightly held together. You can kind of think of it as scotch tape, keeping everything in place until you are ready to fully glue it together. Of course, the glue that you're using just happens to be 7,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Tack welding is very important because not only will it give you a chance to make sure everything is just how you want it to be before you fully weld it together, which of course is a rigorous and very serious business, but also because you don't want your sculpture to get deformed when you do your finish welds. Finish welds put a huge amount of heat into the metal, and that rapid temperature change could lead to the metal deforming, which in turn will misshape your piece if it isn't tacked together properly. Creating the end caps for the points of the crescent moon was relatively straightforward, especially since there was a plasma cutter in the shop. Making three curved pieces of round steel tubing meet together on an angle, however, that was slightly more complicated. A mixture of grinding and welding helped me prep these joints, fuse them together, and then add on the end caps to finish the rest of the welding. My favorite part of any sculpture is when it starts becoming three-dimensional. There is this thrill of excitement I always get when I see something actually taking form in front of me. It's like it's becoming real. Once everything was welded together, we rigged the moon from the ceiling for the first time. This is a great moment to shout out to Shant, whose beautiful shop, I mean, look at this place, it's amazing, I was allowed to use after hours to make this moon. Shant helped me get this project over the finish line in myriad of ways. Oops, time management. So thank you, Shant. I'm so excited, look at it. Rigging up the moon had two purposes. One, to see how it was coming together. Oh my God. Oh, awesome. 
I was so excited and happy. It took all of my willpower not to immediately climb up onto the moon, but I couldn't because of how it was hung. Which leads me to the second reason for hanging up the moon, which was to figure out where I needed to put the pick point. The pick point is essentially the rigging point that my moon will hang from. I wanted the moon to hang vertically down and not be at a strange angle, so I had to level and balance it out exactly. The pick point is by far the most stressful part of the sculpture for me, because it is the one place on the moon that if the welds fail while I'm 40 feet up in the air, well, that's kind of it. So high stakes. To help make it extra strong, I added this tab that would slide through the tubing, which I carefully notched out for a perfect fit. The end of the tab was welded on the back side of the tubing, adding another vector of strength as well as more weld, so ultimately it more than doubled the overall strength of the connection. Now that the moon is made, it's time to cut it fully apart. Yep, so I need to make this moon so it can disassemble, so that I can move it around and transport it. And truly, the hardest part of any large-scale sculpture is designing it not only so that it can disassemble and reassemble, but also do so with reasonable efficiency. And while making sure the piece maintains its structural and its aesthetic integrity. I designed these custom attachment parts and had them machined. My goal was to have a very sleek attachment point that wouldn't ruin the elegant aesthetic of the moon. Spoiler alert, they didn't end up quite working out how I had hoped. The night I thought I was done with the build. The new joints I designed just weren't structural enough, especially with the cantilevered load. See that awful flex where the joints are prying open? Not good. You can also see the load needed to be distributed more evenly from the pick point, because I was having some flex at the top of the sculpture as well. So the next day, after all of the emotions and a lot of thought and calculations, I determined that the best solution was to fabricate some rolled aluminum sleeves that would fit around the joints. Also, slight aside, but that day I went to the ocean in an attempt to cosplay a regular human being, which you will see in a moment was another failure too. If this were an epic saga, this would be the low point. To make these sleeves, I had to bring the moon to a tube bending company about an hour away from the shop. So here I am, packing up the moon in the middle of the night. I tried to have fun in the ocean. I thought I was having a cathartic ocean moment and instead I face it in the sandbar. Um, and this is my labeling. Now this is disassembled. So that's where I'm at. Sometimes you find yourself in a metal shop at 1 a.m with an existential label and a cut up face from failing to have fun. And sometimes that's just the best you can do. It's not structural, but it can fit in a car. <laughs> All right, now I'm back in the shop, I have the sleeves, and I have one week before I have to leave for Burning Man. The pressure is on. The idea with these sleeves was to drill holes through them and the interior tubing so that they will have a mechanical attachment, as well as a whole lot of physical friction gripping the pieces together and distributing the load around the joint. I chose to make these sleeves out of aluminium because it is so much lighter than steel. You can see here they fit super tightly around the tubing, kind of acting like a cast you'd wear if you break a bone. Tonight is all of the finishing touches and the final test. I letterpress stamped a number key onto the sleeves and onto the moon itself so that everything would fit together neatly. I'm carefully cleaning and sanding away all of the sharp edges on these sleeves because whenever there is a sharp edge pressing into metal that is under tension, that can become a dangerous fail point. The time has arrived to fully assemble the moon together with the new sleeves and then hang it up to do the last test. If these new additions to the moon don't work, this whole project would have to be scrapped and I would have to pull out of the show at Burning Man. I feel like this is a good moment to remind you that 
I'm an artist. I joke that I'm a self-taught engineer, mostly because the incredibly dubious nature of the title is hilarious. I mean, who wants that? If there's one time I want bureaucracy up in my business, it's when the structural integrity of the world that I'm living in is at stake. Luckily, when it's just me and my life on the line, I'm either quite smart or very stupid. In this moment, I am very nervous. This is a face of Thea nervousness. Now it is up, there is only one thing left to do. And it worked. Like this feeling. The feeling of imagining something and then making it a reality. It's everything. It's worth it all. Even when it means you're the crazy girl who always ends up barefoot or rolling around on tables in a metal shop because for some reason, that is actually your process. As a young girl, I dreamed about being able to fly. And then I ran away and actually joined the circus. And now here I am getting to create my own aerial sculptures for my own shows. Like, I might be an insane person who can't sleep, but it's worth it. That feeling. This is only half the story. Come back next week for part two of the story when I head off to Burning Man to perform. Hopefully it will be an incredible show and, you know, Hopefully my moon doesn't, like, break apart while I'm 40 feet in the air. Please subscribe and let me know what you think of this design in the comments. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you soon. Brilliant is an online learning platform with a focus on math, engineering, and science. Once you subscribe to Brilliant, you have access to thousands of different STEM education lessons with exclusive new content that is added monthly. Better yet, every single course that Brilliant offers is 100% designed for interactive and hands-on learning. I'm both a hands-on learner and also a project-specific learner. For example, with my moon, I encountered a variety of project-specific challenges, like when I needed to go from this moment of, um, data collection and translate those design parameters into the lengths, angles, and degree of curvature that I needed to design my moon. What I love about Brilliant is that it's an educational site, but it's not teaching you answers. It's teaching you skills and tools and how to use them so that you can figure out answers for yourself. Learning a little bit every day can have a huge impact. Not only will you suddenly realize you actually understand Newton's laws of motion, but overall, you are learning how to be a better thinker and problem solver for any type of challenge that comes your way. The first 200 people get 20% off an annual subscription, so head over to Brilliant and join me for more fun learning today.